Hey, welcome to Windling Farms. We're starting the day off by filling up this 580 with def and fuel. So it's ready to go for later. So we're gonna go work ground. Why, thank you. It doesn't need much def, but we might as well top it off. You know what you're doing in here? How do you get it off uh, foot controls? I know, right here. Right here. Oh, that one. Oh, okay, I was pressing this one. Now it's on joystick. All right. 7.8 hours. What's wrong with this one? It's just dim. Right, right, yeah. You got the lights on? Yeah, you do. Right down. Oh, I know. Lights are right here. Right. We don't know what we're doing in here. Wait, let me let me turn the brightness up. So that 1042 you just saw uh, was delivered yesterday. It's a demo machine, and uh, we got everything hooked up yesterday. And it's going to be in the field today, so we're still uh, trying to get used to that thing. It's it's all new to us, so we're learning. Sure is a sweet tractor, though. It's time to plant. So I just left the farm. I'm heading to go plant a field of beans. Dad left just a little bit ago to get the corn planter fired up. Got some dust flying, so I'm gonna check here, make sure everything's working good, seeds going in nice when I get up here to the end. Making my first pass on this field now. Going along this ditch here using my guidance. Working pretty good. This 40 acres I'm planting split up into two. So there's 20 acres here on this side that I'm planting and 20 acres on the east side. I'm just about done here with this 20. So then I'll fold this thing up, up across the ditch and plant out that 20. Then I'll be on to the next piece. Jeff's getting that worked right now. I could have just left it unfolded and went across this bridge. Although I don't think I would have made that. Yeah, that one's done for. It's all cracked up. I've noticed a hydraulic leak on the planter. So, we're gonna go take a look at this. So it's leaking out of this plug that's going into the side of this gold box here. And I believe I can see, looks like the O-ring is smashed out around that. So I'm thinking if I take that out and put a new O-ring on it, we'll be in good shape. Problem is, I don't have a Allen wrench to take that out of there, so. I don't think I do, at least. We're gonna take a look in the toolbox. I don't have any Allen wrenches on this tractor, so Grandpa's right down the road here. He's gonna pick me up, take me to the farm, and I'm gonna get what I need. Grandpa had picked me up. He took me to the farm because I need to get some Allen wrenches, and I picked up some O-rings and whatnot through in the truck. We got over here, and I went to take that plug out, and it was already loose, so I was like, well shoot, let me tighten it up and see if it'll leak still. So I tightened it up, and sure enough, it's not leaking. So, looks like we're good to go. I'm waiting here for a DGPS signal, and then I can uh, hammer down on this, on this west end. The right thing to do would have been taking that plug out, put the correct O-ring on, tighten it back up, and then that would have been the correct thing to do. But, 
it's probably a certain o-ring that i don't have i know i had an o-ring kit but i probably didn't have that specific o-ring and uh so i just decided to tighten it up and it's not leaking so i say it's good go at least for now it is i'm really tempted to call dad and see how he's getting along playing with that fent tractor uh, i've been spying on him here with my climate on my phone and he's moving through the field and he's planting but I haven't, I haven't bothered him yet. I figured I'd let him get settled in there and then uh, maybe give him a call and see how everything's going. See how he likes the tractor. Still no DGPS, so I'm gonna drive here on the CRP. Just drive around a little bit. See if this thing acquires the signal any faster, because normally it does. They say you're supposed to like drive around to get a DGPS signal, but I really don't have enough space here to drive around like I would if I was in the field polluter or something. And I didn't have a marker thrown out over here because I used my guidance from along the end, so I don't really want to eyeball it. I feel like it's just taking forever. Come on, dang it, I want to plant. Let's go. So I actually didn't have DGPS for a little while, so I planted a couple of passes here on the end. I'm using the guidance now, but I freehanded this in here and then through there along the uh, south side. I, I don't ever manually drive it that much and uh, didn't do too bad. Stopped in for a little dinner. And tonight's dinner is popcorn chicken from Casey's, a Mountain Dew fountain drink, and Lay's. Pretty good stuff, actually. Believe it or not, this is the first time I'm actually using the field lights this year. And I can finally see the cool row lights I put on. You can see the line of lights there on the front of them row units. And it's lighting up those rows. And it looks pretty cool. It's nice to be able to see those uh, row units. The tractor does a good job lighting it up, but that just puts the icing on the cake. Now you can really see every single row. So I'm making my last through here. I'm not done with the field, but the moisture is starting to come out of the ground a little bit. So I'm going to shut this down. I am going to hop in the field cultivator and run it. Um, I'm going to go do one more field this evening, and uh, then I'll be done for the day. We're on the road. Ooh, I forgot to turn my beacon on. Get the strobe going. I really want to turn on my field lights right now, but I should be nice and just leave them off and run these road lights instead. I hate running down the road at night, not having my field lights on because you just can't see everything. But the field lights will blind everybody, so I got to leave them off. Now we're talking. This old 580 will light it up. Oh, we got traffic coming. Better turn it off. Yeah, there's a wet spot there. I'm not working this field. I don't know if you can see it or not. That's, that's all black right there. I figured since this is just a few miles up the road from where uh, the field culvert was just working and I was just planting, that this would be all right, but this up here is a no-go. So I am going to take this up to the road and fold this up and take her to the farm. That was a surprise. I didn't figure that field was gonna be wet like that. It's tough to tell at night too. You're just kind of going along and all of a sudden you look down and you're like, uh-oh. That's damp. So then you go into panic mode. You're like, uh-oh, how long is this going to last? And you keep looking, you keep looking. It's dark, it's dark. You're like, holy cow, when's this going to end? Uh, but anyway, yeah, we just kind of rolled the dice since it was like six miles or so north of where we were just at. Figured it'd be ready to go, but negatory on that one. So I'm going to show you guys the northern lights. My mom's been talking about it. I've turned off my field lights because I was going to look at them. 
I guess you could call these Northern Lights because this is Frito Lay and it's to the north. This is what mom sent me a picture of. That's kind of neat. And it looks like our train has passed, so we better get going. You can't see them on my camera, but watch this. Isn't that neat? It'd be neat if the GoPro picked it up, but for some reason it only picks it up on my phone. Unit, Dad. I like it. You do? Yeah. We're gonna run this baby 40 mile an hour down the road. Dan Hart looks the light eye baseball. Probably not with the planner. <laughs> I'm gonna ride with Dad to the field. He's like a taxi driver this morning. I'm your Uber driver. Uber service. We got a traffic jam here. Let's go, folks. It's quiet. It, it runs low RPM. What do you plan at, Dad? It really doesn't feel like it. The Magnum will run 33, but it feels like you're going 90 in that thing. <laughs> it does. Turn the wiper on. Ready? Oh, she does a full wipe? Oh, yeah. Dad, you're going 34 and a half, and the speed limit's 33. It is? Oh, yeah, there's a speed limit sign. Can you imagine getting pulled over in this thing? Everything I do, I do know. There it is. Better slow down. It is. Their marker didn't go down. Trying to go down now. Push it down. Push the hydraulic in here. Now you're in flow. There it is. It's a smooth ride machine. It's quiet too. So what we need to do is figure out how we can take this monitor and put like uh, the Cardinals game on today. <laughs> you've got you've got five screens in here, Dad. Now you've got the Pro 700. That one that comes out of the ceiling. We got the one here on the armrest, iPad, and then this one here in the front. We've got a little bit of dust flying early morning here, not much. It's a little damp. It really should be in my planner. I'm playing literally right next door. My planner's sitting over there in the barn lot, but I wanted to ride a lap around this field with Dad, so. 1300 RPM. I think I'm running mine about. 1790, 1800. So our fuel consumption is 11 and a half gallon per hour. We're burning about a half to one gallon one per, gallon hour, per of hour of depth. So I'm running about, no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. you're running a gallon per hour of depth and 11 gallons per hour of fuel. Yeah. In my 470, I think I'm running, what did I tell you yesterday? 13? Well, it's similar to this, but I'm also idled back to 1700 RPM or 1800 RPM. Your Magnum, on the other hand, was probably burning, I would say maybe anywhere from 16 to 1819. Because to run that planter all day long, you have to have the throttle all the way up. So 2000 RPM or 2100. Burn a lot more fuel doing that. See you later. Good luck. So yesterday, you guys remember when I was having problems with my uh, DGPS? It's because of the Northern Lights. 
They were giving everybody else problems too. So I wasn't the only one. I've been moving right along here this morning. You can probably see that lighter clay soil. Well, that was a, like a 30 inch main they got put in. It's pretty cloudy and soft there where that main went in. So I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what these beans do there. And next door over there on dad, be interesting to see what the corn does in it. Probably won't do too good, but hopefully it brings up something. It sure did bring up a lot of rocks. I went out and picked up probably four or five of them in one spot. But yeah, this is uh, this is pretty cloudy here. And it sure is soft. Better slow her down a little bit. Oh yeah. I'm gonna be filling up with seed here shortly in about an hour, and that'll finish me up here, and then hopefully. I'll have somewhere else to plant after this. I know we were still doing a little hunt for some dry fields and Jeff's working the field right now ahead of the corn planter and let's hope he can start ahead of me and maybe we can get some more beans planted. It's a hunt for some dry dirt. I'm back at the farm and Jeff's running some ground ahead of dad because he's only got a couple of fields of corn left to plant. So to stay on him, get him taken care of. I am going to go run and check a field. It was worked a while back, so I don't know if I want to go in and plant the stale seed bed or it might need worked again. So I'm going to fuel this thing up, fill this up with seed, and then I'm going to go check that field and make a decision whether or not I want to go ahead and plant it or wait and have it worked again. the load you got there. I only scratched it twice. See, that's the second tank. So the other one's empty. Michael. Okay. okay. We went and looked at that field and I want to rework it. So I'm not going to be able to plant that today. Bean planter is done for the day. So I'm going to do some running around, take seed to dad, run the field cultivator this evening. And uh, so that's, that's my plan for the rest of the day. But that's going to be all for this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.